Hello everybody and uh, welcome to Organian's Puzzle Box. In today's video, I would like to break down the project for the Asteroid Field for Unreal Engine on Unreal Engine Marketplace, ArtStation and Gumroad. This particular project is all about controlling the uh, rocks in space, you know, the rocks of, uh, of, of, our, of our universe. Um, the project comes with 12 asteroids, uh, a blueprint to control the asteroids. There's like an asteroid ring and asteroid field, basically, so you can load up four different asteroids and you have loads of controls over it you're able to control how the asteroids move how they rotate on a pivot how the system entirely rotates how many you're spawning with how big they are the asteroids themselves come with a very highly detailed uh, resolution shader so basically you can load up multiple textures blend them together using masks through the uh, that the asteroids come already prepped with and you're getting so much crunchy detail you could obviously you could walk on that surface of the asteroid at very large scale so one asteroid could be as big as a whole world and the texture will hold up quite nicely from up close and i'm constantly upgrading these projects with more textures more resolution the geometry is there so these asteroids have a very high poly count because i would like the geometry to be uh, available for you to work with you're able to see a lot of the you know the interaction between the uh, sun and shadows and lumen and so on it's really something that you need to to kind of see to to believe so um i'm, I'm just using a, a workflow that i've learned from uh, a very good guy on on our station and from my um, um you know my uh discord uh, uh partner so to speak damien who's really good at showcasing these sort of things so um on top of all of this you're also going to get a ship so basically you're going to have a spaceship that you can fly with um in through the asteroid field you're also going to get some um uh, asteroid dust clouds so again they're vdb driven but they're really good because you're going to get like directional light rays and all sorts of things like that um and it's, it's really cool to use you're also going to get some nebula some blueprint um, nebulas again vdb driven and you're also going to get like a, a highly detailed skybox with 12 hdris that are 16k resolution and again you're able to control that quite nicely as well to really really push your scenes and to top it all off you're also going to have a black hole so you're also going to be able to have a blueprint every black hole that you can drop in your scene to, to use as well so let's not delay any further let's start the showcase i want to i want to go through um the options and what they do how the material works how the asteroid blueprint works and in general just how everything works i'm just going to try and keep it light i don't want to overburden you with details i'm sure you'll explore and, and and find out how it all functions on your own as well but if you have any questions please leave a please a comment leave a comment in the description below and also leave a like subscribe to the channel if you enjoy Enjoy it and consider purchasing the project if you'd like to support me further so I can develop even more. So thank you. And for all the guys that have bought me a coffee, really appreciate it, guys. Um, coffee keeps me going. <laughs> Let's begin. All right, well, let's get going. So this is the overview map that we have where basically we can see all the asteroids in action, the asteroid ring, and just the asteroids themselves, really, we can have a look at what they look like and what the materials do. So every asteroid has its own material instance, so we can actually double click it, and then we can see the settings that are in here, and I'm just gonna give you a, an overview of what they are. So the first thing is this: these two textures. This is a an a texture that's generated specifically for this asteroid. Uh, it's uh, got a mask, so it's an RGB mask, and we're using the mixture between the RGB to tell to blend multiple, you know, these textures in here to give it a nice crisp detail. So if you see, if we're getting quite close to it, you'll notice that the um, details on this asteroid is very, very high. There's a lot of fidelity in here. So even if you're walking with your character on this asteroid, you will get quite a lot of detail. So it's not going to be like low res or anything like that. It's going to be very high res, depend, you know, regardless of what sort of like the, the size of the mesh will be. So that's really useful. And we're doing a lot of mixing in here, so you get a lot of variation of colors. And the normal just adds more uh, crisp detail to the actual uh, mesh itself. So we're just, you know, like encoding the actual, in case you've got like a, a higher poly model uh, than this asteroid, but these are very high poly model as they are, and they're using nanite. And there's a reason for that, because I would like the geometry to capture as much light and shadows as possible. 
Um, then the next thing we've got in here is, you know, we can warp the mask as well. If you want to see the mask, you can just press this RGB visual and we'll show you how the mask shows like, you know, how, how it, how it uh, is being showcased. And the RGB mask is a uh, basically a 512 um, um, uh, pixels resolution mask while the textures are 4K. So if we disable the mask and we do then have a look here, this is uh, one of the textures that we're using. So it's got the base color, normal map, and uh, the um, MROH, which stands for metallic um, uh, roughness, occlusion, and the H at the end is height. So we're using all of those to basically generate all the information that we need. So we can then tile this texture. So the bigger the number here, the, the larger the tiling is, the, the bigger the texture is. If we tone this down, we're going to get a smaller and smaller texture to be used. Now we do have an OAO overlay, so we can use the green channel to basically add more, add some more deets, uh, add some more, uh, you know, darken or brighten the area. So you can see there now I've just added some, um, uh, some darkening. We do have an edge color, which effectively every point, the highest point on the mesh, on the mesh itself, starting from the center, is going to be affected by this. So by this edge color, so that's what that's doing, and it's also helping with uh, adjusting and hiding some of the seams. Uh, we then have the tiling material. Sorry, we then have the um, edge wares, which so this if we're increasing this, we're basically um, uh, you know um, brightening up the edge. But if we're increasing it, we're darkening the edge right there. And this is based on this color that we have over here. We then also have an edge where where we're uh, roughness, where we're sort of like adding more roughness or decreasing it. So right now I'm you know, like decreasing roughness, so the mesh has become quite um, shiny. I'm just going to leave it to 100 so it's like very, um, you know, it's it's quite, you know, like more like a rock, so it's not very shiny. We then have another texture that's being mixed in here. By the way, if we change these textures any particular way, the, the mesh will start, you know, we're going to see some significant changes to the mesh. So I'm just changing that to something else. Um, and then if I tile this maybe like that, you can see now it's looking a little bit different. You are going to have to mix and match and see what works best. Just make sure you don't put uh, too small of a number on the tiling. Then we also have a cavity. So if we disable this, you will see that, um, it, you know, this is how it looks like without, and this is how it looks like with. And then we can have a look at um, adding more cavity. Uh, so right now, I'm just increasing some, of, you know, the scale of the cavity in there. The, the cavity will show up in areas where there's like, you know, dents and stuff like that. Uh, other areas where there, there isn't really any, that we won't really be able to see it. And the cavity itself also has like a roughness slider as well. So we can add some shininess inside these crevices if we would like. You can see the cavity there when we're changing the normal. Uh, that's, that's being, that's affecting... Uh, those areas purely because there is uh, that's where the cavity sort of exists. Uh, we can also change the color of the cavity, so it really depends on your mesh. If your mesh has a lot of holes in it, then you'll be able to see it. We then have uh, intensity of our detail texturing. So what this means is that we're adding another layer of texture, as you can see right there, using a smaller texture like that. And again, this is really powerful because it really changes the look and feel of the of the mesh. So if we change this to maybe something else, you can see there now that looks so much more different. Um, and then the we can play around with the intensity of the normal, the scale of this uh, of this texturing. So you can make it quite small as well if you'd like to get more detail. Um, but then let me just change it to let's just have a look. So we could try zero one and then increase the normal intensity so you can see now the mesh looks so much more different than what it was um and then we can play around with the coloring as well so maybe something like that and you can see now it just looks so much more different but it's very detailed so the closer you get it's going to have a lot of detail in there on the on the actual asteroid itself uh, we can also enable world detail which then will add another blend so you can see in here we just added the world detail and now I'm just going to play around with it. This world, you can see it over there. This world detail is um, world aligned, which means that if you rotate the mesh, the world detail will stay in a place that you sort of dropped it. And you can also play around with uh, these the sort of settings in here where, you know, you're making it less opaque or more opaque, uh, taking some of that contrast down, you know, something like that. And then you can increase the normal strength if you want to see it a bit more. 
Um, okay, now let's just disable that and let's have a look at the top blend. So if you're adding a top blend, this is adding another texture on top. So right now it's uh, it's literally uh, adding on top of the, our current texture. So it is at this point, uh, we're sort of like we can blend it a bit or a bit more. And then we can have a look at blending between the normals as well. Uh, you can then increase the opacity and you're getting some more detail there, as you can see. So that's adding, you know, that's adding even more texture to the asteroid. And then we also have a world noise. So if you add that, you can see it's added these sort of like blemishes around here, depending on the color they're trying to use. And then you can fill some more in or increase the opacity or decrease it, depending on how, you know, how much you want to see and also the tiling of it. So this is adding an extra layer of detail as well. So as you can see, the mesh is very, very detailed. There's a lot of stuff in here that you can do with it. Um, and that's just one of them. And we've got 12 in here with various different textures. There's over 12, 12, uh, 12 uh, different textures that you can use for these and combine them and get different, various different effects. Um, you've also got the ice meshes as well. So the ice asteroids and all of these can be loaded up in the blueprint that is allowing the system to rotate. So if we press play right now, you can actually see these asteroids rotating on their pivots and also rotating around in the world. So this is quite useful. Now, what I want to do is let's just jump in into uh, one of the, you know, one of the example maps. So you can see these asteroids in action and you can also see the ship system, the flight system and all that, because this whole thing comes with the ability for you to fly. Uh, between them to drive to, to fly through like uh, dust clouds that are embedded within the asteroids themselves as well and it really just makes uh, makes it really cool for like an epic scene for you to be able to, to experiment with and you know uh, implement within your own scene okay so i've just opened one of the maps one of the example maps from um, my uh, cosmic forge um, this is a uh, map three of the four maps that you have and the scene has quite a few elements inside of it it's got a uh, black hole, which is over there, which is a blueprint, all of it. This black hole black hole is controllable by a blueprint, color, uh, you know, size, and, also the, and all sorts of things. So this is quite an interesting sort of effect. As you can see, it's also affecting the skybox. The skybox is another blueprint which you can control. You can control the brightness of the skybox. You can control which HDRI is being loaded, if it moves, if it's, it's animated and so on. So already there, you've got two different blueprints with loads of content in them. There's like 12 different skyboxes uh, given in here. So you can like, for example, we could change this to number four, which is a different skybox. Now let's have a look at the blueprint itself in action. So this is the blueprint for the asteroids themselves. And if I select them over here, let's say this one, if I go over like that into the scene, I can see them from further away. Now I can start playing around with the settings. So some of the settings in here are about the rotation and location. So for example, if we put the, the location on this to five, you can see where the asteroids have now been placed. And maybe I can change this to a two as well. So the rotation and, and location of the asteroids will change. I can then load up more asteroids per segment of the of the ring. And I can also say I want 40 asteroids per um, segment of the ring. I can also play around with the radius. Maybe I want a smaller radius and maybe I want them to be higher. So you can see now they're like almost like a ball, right? And then I can also say, well, I want them to be smaller. So something like that. Now, I maybe also want to change the, the shape of them even further. So something like that. And maybe I also would like them, uh, some of them to rotate on their own axis. And I might want the whole system to rotate as well. So with all those settings done, if I press, if I'm, I'm on a current camera location, I press play. You can see now that the asteroids are rotating on their own pivots and they're also rotating around this particular mesh as well, which is, you know, really cool. Now, obviously, you can fine tune this to your liking and there's loads of loads of things that you can do here to change them further. You can load up different, you know, various different asteroids within the blueprint. So over here, you've got you know, four different asteroids that you can load up and they will then be multiplied across based on your settings. And now the final thing that we can do 
if we switch over to our default player start and we press play you will notice you have a ship here that you can then um, navigate with through the scene and just make sure you don't crash into anything but you can then fly around into the asteroid field like that and we can you know we'll see all these asteroids obviously and the, the, the settings are just quite bad i've just made them move and rotate very weirdly but as you can see we can now sort of go in here and we can also collide with them if we'd like to so i'm just flying straight into these and as you can see i've just been thrown out into space just remember all the settings in here everything that you have are uh, changeable so you can change a lot of these details you can edit all the blueprints the ship itself has got a entire system in place in here that you can use to modify to your heart content for rolling for animations for speed for thrusting um the asteroid itself has got loads of different settings in here and they are quite self-explanatory of what they do all of them um so you know it's quite uh they're quite detailed and there's also tutorials on my channel that further talks about how to use all of this all of this stuff as well so everything has got this content around it and there is loads of um loads of research done for on my youtube channel so how, of how you can actually use all of this and what i really love also is that the you know things like the black hole is affecting so many different things as well and just overall this is you know a good solution for people that are looking to build a space game because you're able to fly a ship you're able to generate asteroids that are walkable as well you can walk on them very highly detailed you've got a skybox with very highly detailed textures and so on but that was the tutorial i hope you guys have enjoyed um it's hopefully a good enough showcase if you need more help please uh consider you know getting in contact with me the project is available on patreon as well so anybody who subscribes to patreon can actually get the project at no extra fee so yeah i'll keep you guys updated i'll continue to support the project add more features to it and yeah i hope you guys enjoyed it and i'll see you in the next one keep creating